So what's another example of obesogens? Pharmaceutical. For example, SSRI, um, like Paxil and Zoloft uh, can, can, uh, can cause obesity. And the mechanism is interference with serotonin metabolism. And I'm not just, I'm not saying that SSRIs are the only medicines that cause obesity. It's just one, one type. All right, this, this is the type of pharmacy I prefer. You know, take one a day with a tomato and cucumber. All right, so back to the tributyl tin. This is another study. They gave this chemical, which, which disrupts the endocrine system of our body, the hormones, they gave it to pregnant mice. And the, the mouse on the left that was exposed was fatter. So they've studied this scientifically. And as I've intimated, it's complicated. It, it, it goes after multiple targets. And again, we're not gonna go into the details. The details are not as important to understand that this one chemical, which is a man-made chemical, our systems were not designed to deal with this can wreak habit. And this tributyl tin is now bioaccumulating in seafood. And so, yeah, so this is one reason you don't want to eat shrimp or other seafood is you're going to get a high dose of this tributyl tin. All right, so what's the mechanism that actually makes us fat? And it's... Um, it's complicated. It's all these different systems. You know, some chemicals will affect the thymus gland. Some will affect the pancreas. Some will affect the thyroid. Some will affect all of them. Some will, will affect the adrenals. It's complicated. And because it's complicated, because there's, it's not simple, it's been complicated to study, and the message has been diffused, where the, the food companies can just say, or the chemical companies can just say, Oh, we need more research. Well, the research is in. I mean, the, but, but even if it wasn't, it's the precautionary principle. Don't expose us to these chemicals if we don't know the long-term effect. I don't want to be part of that experiment. So mammal estrogens might be one of the most underappreciated obesogens. Where would we get mammal estrogens? And it turns out we get it from dairy, dairy food, Dairy accounts for 60 to 80% of estrogens from food in the Western, uh, Western uh, countries. And, but, but you have to be a smart consumer because you might see on, on, a, on a bottle of milk or whatever, no added hormones. But that doesn't mean there's no hormones. There is, by definition. If you're eating flesh or a body part from a, a mammal, you, there are, by definition, estrogens and other hormones in it. It has to be, that's part of how mammals survive. And meat, you know, about 90% of feedlot cattle are given estrogen implants. Now, why in the world, if you were a farmer raising cattle, why would you implant estrogens? And the answer is because you want bigger cattle, you want more meat. Well, guess what? It's not like the estrogen works on the, on the cattle, but doesn't work on humans. No, we're mammals too. If we increase the amount of estrogen in our diet or estrogen chemicals, boom, we're going to be bigger. All right. So between all this estrogen, the tributyl tin and the seafood and all the persistent organic pollutants that we get from animal fat, it's pretty clear where we're getting most of our obesogens from, and that's animal products. And I speak we, it's like if you're not plant-based vegan. All right. Well, that leads us to the number one step that you can do to prevent most obesogens from entering your body. And that's just don't eat animal products. So here's an action plan. Number one, avoid animal products in your diet. Number two, avoid plastics. All right. So, I mean, I wish, I'd, I wish my parents had learned this, you know, decades ago. Um, and, and this is what's so, so concerning about this is the half-life for many of these chemicals, the PCBs, the DDTs is 10, 20, 30 years. 
So it doesn't matter that I, I cut out all animal products five years ago or 10 years ago or whatever it is, I still have that in my body. So what can I do to reduce those obesity? Well, let me share with you what I was taught when, when in, in my training. I was taught there are only two ways to reduce these fatty toxins like PCB and DDT. And unfortunately, you have to be female to do these. One is to lactate every day. The toxins will go into the milk. Or you can have a child and then toxins go into the fetus and placenta. Yeah, that, I, I was shocked when I heard this. I, I first heard this in the late 90s. And at, at the time, I, I happened to be uh, working at Detroit Receiving Hospital training there. And, um, you know, I knew the Detroit River right there was polluted, tires and the oil industry, you know, for, for over 100 years. Um, and recently in, in the news has been Flint, Michigan, right nearby, you know, lead and then infection from Legionella. But as I shared with you, I grew up in Los Angeles. And, and you might say, well, I'm not from Los Angeles and I'm not from Michigan, so I don't have to worry. No, unfortunately, this is now everywhere. Especially if you're exposed to these things and they stick around for decades, it's still, it's still there, even if you eat perfectly right now. So what are some other ways you can remove these toxins? Well, here, here's some examples. In, in a clinic I'm working at now, we use two, we, we start IVs and we start phosphatidylcholine and glutathione. And here are their chemical structure. These, these are both, well, phosphatidylcholine is a fatty structure where it's got a fatty part, which will, it'll basically go into your fat cell in your brain and push out the, the fatty toxins we just talked about. Another thing, another compound that's key for removing toxins in the body is called glutathione. And glutathione is simply three amino acids stuck together. You're, and your body makes some on its own, just the amount it makes goes down with time. <laughs>